welcome. This is Mibbit Marketing and I am your host, Rachel Claver. I love helping small business owners become more confident and more capable with their marketing. So this podcast is all here to help you do just that. It's me and the help of some great guests helping you learn new skills, new strategies and ideas. Let's jump in and get started. One of the most common things that I have to tell our clients is to remember email marketing is not about you and how often you like to have an email. It is about how often your audience likes to have an email. And if they love you and they love your products, it's going to be a lot more than you expect. Email marketing can make a dramatic difference to your sales with an e-commerce business. In fact, some e-commerce businesses will see excess of 30% of their sales and growth come from email marketing if they do it right. But if you think sending out a monthly email to everyone on your list is going to get you the results that you deserve, then you need a mindset change. And this podcast is going to help you change your mind. I'm thrilled to have team member, fellow marketing strategist that identify Tracy Smith with us today. Tracy specializes in e-commerce marketing with a particular love of email marketing and she is going to teach us what she herself applies to her own successful thriving e-commerce business. In this episode we cover how best to cater for different audiences at each stage of the customer journey and what Tracy will use herself to keep people buying without sending out mass emails to everyone on the list. We're going to show you how to get more sales from your subscribers and how often we can email people. Plus, she is going to walk you through how she uses marketing automation to get great Google reviews. Tracy is a wealth of knowledge and I so enjoyed having this conversation with her. I am sure that you will find this useful too, especially if you have an e-commerce business. Let's get listening. Hi, and welcome to the Mavit Marketing Podcast. I'm your host, Rachel Claver, and I'm really looking forward to today because we've got one of our team members on our podcast today, Tracy Smith. She's going to introduce herself to you in just a moment and tell you what she's doing. But first, I want to say thank you so much for tuning in. Today in particular, I've just had lots of lovely feedback about our podcast. It just makes me feel so thankful that I'm doing something that so many people enjoy. So thank you. Please do remember to rate and review it if you enjoy it. And if you're new to the show, go and have a look at some of our other podcasts. We've got a link of a few other ones that are related to this topic um, in the show notes for you to give a go at first. And yeah, we'd love to see you again. Right. Let's get started. Tracy Smith. Hello. Hello, hello. How are you? Welcome to the show again. You came on last year and we haven't had you back since. No, it's just been too busy. You've had too many other awesome people to interview. (laughs) I know. And I and I fully intend to have you on more regularly too. So it's like terrible. I think last time I said to you, we'll be doing this again soon. And that was, I think, was like, I don't know, six or seven months ago. Um, so Tracy, tell us a little bit about you at Identify. Like what are the things that you do with us or you know, like your passions? Yep. So I um, am a marketing strategist, which I absolutely love because I just love deep diving into all these different, you know, um, our clients' businesses and just having a look at them. And I, as much as I can um, teach them things, you know, sometimes they'll teach you a few things, which I love, but I really, really love the techie side of email marketing automation. It, um, it just excites me. Yeah, I know you get super excited about it. And you, um, one of the platform that we use is Active Campaign, yep. and you personally, you have your own e-commerce business, right? Yeah, yep. So I have my own e-commerce business. That so when I'm doing stuff, I'm not just um, oh yeah, I read that this is an awesome automation. Let's chuck it in there. I actually play around with them and use them and then I can find if they do or don't work before we then go and use them with our clients. And I think one of the benefits of that is that, you know, when we're, we're quite pragmatic, you know, I think with everything, I was talking to someone earlier today who was thinking about working with us and, you know, I said, you're not quite ready to work with us. You can, mm. and you're very welcome to, but we're very pragmatic. We want to get those results. Mm. And, and so, you know, like being able to test things out with our own stuff, with yours, with, with e-commerce and then us with services does actually help us do that really well, which is awesome. Um, okay. So, so tell us um, like about your e-commerce store. Like how long has that been going for? So technically it's been um, probably, goodness, what are we now? 
probably about 16, 17 months since I put the website live. But the first six months of that, in all honesty, I wasn't even focused on selling. I was just working out the email automations and working on SEO and making sure the images are all correct, all of that techie stuff. Um, So I probably did put it live before it was 100% ready. I would say we've been trading since what I call my first official trading month was April Mm -hmm. um, last year. So it's still under 12 months old, but we are pretty firmly sitting in the six figure turnover category already. And it's not the end of that first 12 months yet. So um, something I'm pretty proud of, to be honest. And I think that you have Just in that one little statement around how you didn't really focus on selling and you spent that six months really looking at checking everything was structurally correct and all the systems were correct around your website and your email marketing is actually one of the key things that I think a lot of people don't do with e-commerce. Like often email, for example, is something they come to late. And often, like I was, as I said, there was like someone I was working with also earlier today and I was trying to show them why something wasn't working well in their marketing and their website doesn't have pictures that have got like all the tags and things they're mm. not well optimized they don't have great descriptions all the structural things that make someone decide to buy from you when you get there make it easy yeah. for that wasn't there so anything you do for marketing is kind of stuck when that happens and so you really just got that foundation right at the beginning didn't you yeah I mean and it wasn't easy I like I think you and I say like quite a lot is that people like business owners you're either paying with your time or you're paying someone else with money to do the job Mm -hmm. and mine was I paid with my time so I'll be honest it was a lot of you know midnight finishes because I was working right in the middle of getting all you know even down to my images file names I wanted correct but you know for SEO so it was a lot of work so it would have been too much to try and sell and have it but the reason why I made it live early though is because also I wanted Google to know it was there and I wanted Google to have trawled it a few times in before you know so that when I was ready to sell I already had a little bit of data sitting in those analytics and things like that. And one of the things I really like, because obviously we get to see behind the scenes a bit with your your website, your e-commerce website, um, not everything, like I'm not logging into your active campaign, <laughs> I don't have logins, so we're cool. But I know from what Rod has said, my husband, and, and you know, guys work together, one of the things that's been quite different to, from your account to a lot of our clients who are coming to us quite late for email is that you actually get a lot of sales from your email marketing automations. These are not just campaigns, which, and, and just to, I'm just going to clarify that to everyone. A campaign is something where you go, here's my list, here's my topic. I might send it to a group of people on my list and I'm going to write it and schedule to send it. That's yeah. not what we're talking about here, is it? No, no, absolutely not. So um, I, so the automations are the things that happen based on your customer's behaviour, really. And so if they've made a purchase, if they have visited a certain page five times, you know, they're the things that will trigger an automation and, you know, using things like conditional formatting in your, in your email so that you're talking to them about what they want to hear about, not what you want to tell them. Mm-hmm. Whereas campaigns... The way I try to describe it to people is they're those once a month newsletters that everyone's familiar with. And unfortunately, people think that's all email marketing is, is those newsletters. In all honesty, that's the stuff that you're filling the gaps with. That's not what it's about. Yeah, and I think um, that's that's the thing that I think is quite surprising. Like, I know that there's a client that we worked with a few years ago, and it was a skincare brand. I won't say the brand because obviously giving away their secrets. But one of the things they did when they came to us is they said, we want to have lots of marketing automation. And then she's gone on to have babies and things like that. And they've had big gaps of those regular emails. Yeah. But they still get consistent sales because the automations get the sales for them. Yeah, absolutely. And that's that's exactly what I find because, you know, even with e-commerce, it still takes a little while to grow. So I am still doing all the things, you know, I'm still dealing with customers. I will go out and pack orders when I have to. Um, I have someone just after school yeah, helping. But- when you have to. Yeah, <laughs> I hate packing orders. <laughs> yeah, I, it's funny because eh, I was we're talking about that because it starts off exciting because you're so excited <laughs> about doing it. And then about two weeks in, you're like, no. Yeah, we've had one client once who used to love it. She used to sit down um, in front of the television and pack her orders um, and drink wine. But I I can't do that. I need to have complete, complete concentration. To me, it's such a boring thing to have to pack. 
Absolutely. And so, so I've actually got, um, I'm really lucky. I've got my niece after school a couple of days a week. And then I just, my husband and I, we just fill in the gaps doing them the rest of the time. But because I am still doing all of that, you know, I, I, it takes a lot to create an email and to be honest, to create those campaigns, they, they take a lot of time. And so I would rather people hearing from me, you know, at the time though, that, you know, if they've, purchased a particular product and I know it's a refillable product and it usually it takes six weeks before it needs refilling they need to hear from me at week five now to try and keep track of every single person on my list oh it's week five you better go and create an email that's crazy whereas an automation that takes care of it all for you you don't have to think yeah and so that's what's great with consumable product businesses is you can do that you know it's one of the things we do mm-hmm. often suggest to people that they don't do where you know like I, I bought from one of our clients before Christmas and I said to her you need to have a reminder I uh, haven't had my reminder and my thing's empty and I actually want to buy from her but I, I it's not like I'm punishing her but there's this thing where I just need something to tip me over the edge and even now I'm saying to you I must remember to do that but I'm on a podcast so I'm going to forget but you know, right. it's like it's not it's not annoying someone it's serving them by sending yeah. those emails and reminding them and I think that's the big difference isn't it absolutely like if you're selling it as a sales tactic I mean of of course it is about getting sales but if you're selling it just to sell something you're going to miss the mark every time but if you're selling it as I'm going to try and sell you know you that reminder a week before like that um sorry send that reminder a week before I know that you're probably going to need it then I've and, and I've got a link for you to jump over and just quickly refill your product then that's one less thing in your life you have to worry about oh my god I've run out now what do I do you know it helps it's serving me yeah Uh, it's not about me let's be honest exactly (laughs) but that's what it should be about it should be all about the customer absolutely so okay so let's just talk about a few different places that we could put automation that people might be surprised about so um, for example, um, do you have anything that happens if someone, but do you have any, lead, do you have any, I don't know if you do actually, so it's not a lead question, leading mm-hmm. question. Do you have lead generation on your website where they've got to download a email, get, give you an email for something in return? Yeah. So I have a lot of different options and this is something I think, and I, I say to you like a, quite a few times, it's not my job to tell my customer how they should buy from me. It's my job to offer them every opportunity to buy from me in the way that suits them. I so like I have free shipping if they sign up. I also have a whole heap of free tutorials that helps them with um, use the products that I sell and they're quite, they're really valuable ones. Um, They're not just like a little bit, you know, wishy-washy. They're quite valuable tutorials and I have them actually as a product on my website, a free product. So in order to get them though, it's that exchange, isn't it? Okay, I'm happy to give you all this free information, but I want your email and after that, if they don't want to hear it, they're free to unsubscribe. And, and I'm not bothered by that. Um, but mind you, I've got my logo all over those free tutorials. So when they open it, they do remember where they got it from. But if they've unsubscribed, good on them, you know, yeah. at least that's the way it is. But so many of them don't. And crazily enough, I was actually looking with Rod the other day, that free tutorial email that they get with the link to their tutorial for the download, that's actually one of my highest revenue earning emails and that's off a free product. So then they obviously interesting. click through and go, okay, I'm going to take this free tutorial, but I'm also now going to go and have a look at everything that goes with it. Because I think like, I mean, obviously we always say it for, for services and as a service-based business, we have lots of those free lead generation things, but people often don't see them as a thing for products. Like we've just opened our own Shopify store for Identify and we've got a mix of physical and digital products. And my goal this month is to create some free products for that because like physical products or digital products that relate to your physical products are powerful to have as free on any e-commerce website. Would you agree? Absolutely. And you want to look at it, though, um, in a way that you are actually genuinely giving your customer something. It has to be good, right? Can't be a part of crap. 
No, and it can't be a gimmick. It can't be like, I'm just going to give you this whole heap of information that you can get for free anywhere else, but I'm going to, no, that's not a that's not a fair transaction and you're going to find it's not going to be, yeah, you'll get people signing up, but it's not going to be successful as though when you're giving them something that's genuinely valuable, all of a sudden that transaction makes it so much easier and then you get that trust from them. And I think one of the things that people often get struck, stuck by this in e-commerce is they go, well, what could I give them digitally that could help them buy? And so it can be something like a tutorial that uses your products. Mm. It could be a recipe that uses your products. Mm. It could be a style guide. Um, you know, for us, you know, we're, we're going to do a few that's around how to do different segments, short segments of some of mm. our bigger products. So they get that value and they can kind of work things out. I think there's a lot of things you can do that add yeah. value. Yeah, definitely. Without a doubt. Okay. So, so. That was that's a good start at the beginning of the stage. What are some other automations that you use for people that maybe, do you have any others that help people before they've bought from you? Is there anything else that you do that maybe before they've bought from you, they could get something from you? Um, I pretty much stick to the free shipping at that point. Yeah. Um, in the e-commerce world, that is quite, um, I mean, to be honest, as the business owner, it kills me <laughs> because I'm still yeah. paying for the shipping. So it is a genuine free gift. Yeah. Um, but it is one that's also seen as highly valuable for my customers. And so that's why that works as, as a good transactional kind of offer. Um, but what I will do is I will offer that um, if I actually separate my welcome automations as well. So I have a welcome for people who have purchased for the first time yeah. and may have come through a different advertising channel but then I have a different welcome for people who have just signed up from the forms on my website or got the free tutorials and that's where I then you know say hey and and I remind them to use it you know you haven't used it yet obviously they haven't made a purchase so they haven't used it yet mm -hmm. hey feel free to jump on and use this you know this voucher for free shipping so I think that's great because the thing is that, and, and we'll talk about this probably a bit later as well, but one of the things that I think e-commerce businesses forget to do is to consider that LTV, that lifetime value of the customer. And mm -hmm. because you are buying, your, you know, like if you were selling, I don't know, puppies, the, the lifetime value of like just selling puppies isn't great. So like having free shipping on a puppy might not be a great thing. That was a terrible thing to use as an example. <laughs> you can't ship a puppy. But, but like, well, you, if can. It, you, well, you can. You can. I haven't had a puppy ship to me. I don't think about it. But, um, but you, because it's consumables, what you're doing is saying, I'm going to show you, I'm still wooing you. I'm dating you still. I'm going to give you free shipping, which costs me. I'm going mm -hmm. to send my product to you. And the experience is going to be so good that you're going to go, I need to get some more from you. Absolutely. Yep. And we also make it all about the, the post-sale customer service. So I'm kind of backing up the message I'm giving them in my email marketing with what we actually are physically doing too. So sometimes that is um, like I have a post-purchase email or marketing email that goes out. Would you believe I even still get sales off that? That's but, great. Yeah. and But that's a little bit about, you know, creating more trust. So at this point, I do realize you have purchased from me and I'm, I'm saying, I say thank you to them. You know, I really appreciate your support. And I also ask their opinion. Is there anything else I can do for you? Because let's be honest, my job is to give them what they want. And unless I know what they want, I can't give it to them. So I need to ask them. So I use email marketing automation for that as well. And that's marketing you know customer mm. service is marketing and I think that's a really important thing um I, I don't know I don't know if I've ever told you the story but we worked years ago when we first started identify we worked for a business that sold these very expensive designer socks and the website was nice the, the socks are beautiful everything but one of our team bought three pairs for Christmas presents and and the owner was quite an old guy <laughs> and he wanted to save money on postage so he took all the wrapping off the of the socks and just rolled them up into little balls and shoved mm -hmm. them into a thing so when she gets them they're just like six socks like like they're not even really paired up anymore and so that whole experience of buying <laughs> was was gone you know these are 40 dollars a pair of socks yeah you know, dollars of, of socks and he wanted to save like I think a dollar fifty on the bag so he <laughs> he did that. And, and I think that that whole custom experience again like that with the emails are wooing that customer service mm -hmm. getting things out quickly if there's a delay and they know there's a delay those are all the things that help people build trust with you isn't it absolutely and you yep. can use email for that 
Yeah, um, that's exactly, that's what you should be using it for. Yeah. Now, you have a little hack. Um, I don't even know if you want to share this on here, but you have a little, <laughs> you might tell me one of your like, Oh, what is it? <laughs> um, you have a little hack to make sure that you get the best reviews. Yes, I do. <laughs> do you want to share it? I will happily share it because everybody listening should be using it too as well. Okay. So I use and but it's also again it actually is around customer service yeah. so it's not it's not that I don't get bad reviews I do don't you worry but it's um how I deal with them so I use a platform that um sends out six questions it's just a questionnaire platform I have um really refined those questions over time to make sure that I'm getting the info I need and I'm getting honest info and and reviews and so basically it also luckily enough for me integrates into my active campaign and so if I get a bad score or a bad review I have an uh, automation in my um, active campaign that then sends me a notification because these two platforms are integrated they talk to each other if I get, a, you know, a low score, a one to six out of 10, it sends me a notification with a link to the actual um, review. So you know so, you can follow it up. Yeah, so we make it our business then to go and follow them up. And I can honestly say I have had a re, uh, email from one of these customers that said, had you not done this, I would never have purchased from you again, but I am so impressed that I will become a regular buyer. And she did. She came back and made another purchase. And let's, um, just, let's just clarify. I just want to say something. Tracy has great customer service. These are often issues. I'm just assuming because I yeah. know Tracy's in Australia, like New Zealand, Australia have big freight issues. I'm imagining it was probably something discussing yeah. around the couriers not delivering something for weeks on end and yeah. just getting frustrated. Would that be accurate? That is pretty much 99% yeah, of our so. <laughs> Yeah, it's it's because we had something lo get lost before Christmas too. And I was just like, um, I've rung all the couriers. I don't know where it is. We yep. were sending out new copies here and there. Like it was just hard, you know. Yeah. Um, but, but it is hard not to get personal to the to the person who runs the business. When it is your business, it hurts so much when someone says something. And it hurts even more when I know that I've done everything I can and it's yeah. been. And and I can't even like sometimes it's coming like the manufacturer's had an issue at their end or sometimes it's the freighter mm -hmm. or the courier. And I can't even get angry at them because of the situation that we're in, you know. And I went for, you know, most of the whole business until the last six weeks, never having had one parcel lost. And I've had about six lost in like the last six weeks so oh, no, no, so bad and, yeah so anyway but with this um market, servicate. yeah server kate the other cool thing though is that if they give me a nine out of ten or a ten out of ten um it automatically then waits for another week puts them into a new automation sitting inside active campaign that then sends them a link to my google reviews and say ah. and a really nice way of getting really nice Google reviews. Now, I'm not scared of bad ones because I do think they help give you a little bit of um, honesty in there. But I know that um, I don't want to be sitting there dealing with them all day and having to write big, long posts about why something didn't happen um, because you have to reply. Yeah, I think too, though, like I, I am... Um... I was talking to someone recently. We, we got some negative feedback um, that we didn't actually get. It was put publicly. And I went and it was someone that I thought we had a great relationship with. So mm. I went and talked to her about it. And she said, oh, actually, I had no problems with any of the work you did. I just wanted you to do this thing. And I know you said you didn't do it, but I still wanted it, which is why I gave you a bad review, which seems kind of backwards. Yeah. But like my whole thing is this, that, that if you're doing your customer service, it's okay to be giving it to the people that you know are going to do it well, there'll still be the occasional person who circumvents all your trying and mm -hmm. trying to remedy thing, but you're doing exactly what you should be doing by trying to cut off those problems because you'd expect that if someone was unhappy, that they would actually come to you first, right? Yeah, yeah. And But some people are too scared to, you know? Yeah. They don't want to create waves. But when you're giving them this um, almost, it's not anonymous, but it is a semi-anonymous platform to say, hey, were, did you find everything on my website? So some of yeah. my questions are tech 
like related, you know, was it easy to find what you needed? Um, and were you happy with the customer service that you received? And, you know, so you, if you're asking the right questions, because then it, t it also shows you where the gaps are in your business and you can go, I need to fill that and I need to get that plugged and make sure that this customer's experience was a good one. And I think I wrote a blog about it or a Facebook post that, you know, when they're complaining, they're in this heightened emotional sense whereas if you can jump in at that exact moment when they're unhappy and make that a positive experience you've actually got all this extra benefit of that heightened level of emotion but now it's all of a sudden positive emotion yeah. and you can kind of you know they're walking away maybe 10 times happier than they would have been had everything just gone smooth sailing yeah, and I think, I mean, I was saying to you before that I, I had to go for a walk before this because I had the rage because um, we had, we had, we're trying to get something across the line with, with a funding body and they declined it. Um, but when I went to ask a question about it, they said it would take five to 10 business days to reply back to that. And it just gave me all the rage because there's no <laughs> other way for me to talk to them. I think when people feel they can't talk to the owner or can't, when they're powerless, that's when people get really frustrated. Yeah. So what you're doing is removing that and giving them a sense of ownership, which mm -hmm. is really powerful. We could talk well, about that part mentioned. all day, but let's yeah. just go and talk about, I want to ask you a really important question because I know you and I are probably on the same page with this, but I know our listeners will not be likely. How often do you think we can email people? I think about this one a lot. So if you're giving them what they want to hear about, you could email them every day. If you, yeah. you know, but if that message is off, you all, all of a sudden become junk and noise and it's, you know, once a month could be too often for them. So the trick really, really is to be talking to them about what, what they want when they want. And that's one of the things, I, you know, about the platform that we use and that I use. I mean, I, I've done some in all different platforms, so I'm quite familiar with them all, but I love using what they call predictive sending, which means that it actually sends it to them when they're most likely to open it, which is mm. actually what at a time that suits them so it's not it, it's just getting that message in front of them at a time that suits them I love that and I don't actually use that I'm just thinking that I probably should um but I agree with you with the you know with with that kind of how often I, I always say to people who say I, I can't email my people more than once a month if it's a man and I'm being a bit gender specific here but like we work with a few like men who are sort of in that over 50 space and you know Rod is like that too <laughs> doesn't like emails you know like he always unsubscribes everything he feels like spamming them even if he buys them all the time and so we always say you know you're not your ideal customer but for, mm. for most women I'll say you think that it's too many but I want to ask you do you have a clothing retailer that you absolutely love or a homewares one that you are getting an email from them every day do you get angry with them or do you open about 60 to 70 percent of them and yeah. most of them nearly everyone will say I actually I, I I open quite a lot of them and I don't unsubscribe and yeah. I think that's it's uh, it's when we kind of often we don't want to push our stuff on someone but we're quite happy to receive that much mm. Absolutely. You know, and I mean, the only time I think that I have been disappointed in someone that I did want to hear from was when they were emailing me about four times a day. And yeah, a bit much, eh? That was a bit much because, but you know why? Because they hadn't then done any work in their email about putting the, it was, um, and I think I say it to all my um, clients, I love camping. Our family loves camping. We go away a lot. But there's such a big realm of camping products that they were sending out these emails for four-wheel drive accessories. Well, that's not our type of camping. Yes. We have a camper trailer yes. and we have kids that we camp with. So what they weren't doing was segmenting out their emails. Yeah. So, yes, I wanted to hear from it, but I had to scroll through, you know, probably four or five swipes of four-wheel drive spotlights before I got to stuff that is handy for a, camp, a family to go camping where have they used a bit more segmentation and really deep you know and I'd purchase from them about two or three times so had they used that purchasing behavior from me to say this is the kind of stuff she's been she's purchased so we're going to show her more of stuff in those categories I would have looked at every single email but in the end probably only one fifth of the email was um you know aimed at me and I had to scroll through and swipe through so much of it that I just unsubscribed because I think it's a really fascinating one because you know quite smallest can do this but I'm fascinated 
that big big groups don't do this like I know that I get the same thing where often especially like if I'm buying stuff from an like an overseas company like a, a, a clothing company or something like that and they're sending me stuff that's obviously for an American audience and mm. has American stuff on it I'm like surely you must have enough data even with my address to be able to segment me out and go hey we're just going to do this to our overseas market like being mm. able to segment out or looking at my past buying behavior like uh, you know we know you and I know this back and forth that you know you can have a group of 100 people out of 20 thousand people and that group can be fully engaged and if you send just those 120 people a targeted email you'll make more money than if you send it to all 20,000 people absolutely hands down because if you send it to all 20,000 and then you know 19,000 don't open it what happens is and this is where the techie side of email marketing comes in you've just told you know outlook and gmail and all the servers and everything that no one likes your emails if you sent it to just those 100 and 99 opened you've told all of those platforms that everyone you've sent it to loves your emails so next time you send something you know they're going to look really favorably on it and get it into the inbox rather into the promotions or or other or whatever your platform uses to separate them out and, or the dreaded bottom rung spam <laughs> yeah which you don't want because i know that even with our automations you know for that's one of the other reasons that automations and lead generation is so good is that the open rate, I think ours is sitting at around between 70 to 80%, depending on mm -hmm. it, of opening at least one or most of those emails. Like it'll be similar to you. It's training those, each one of them, their little email provider that all oh, your emails are okay, which means when your campaigns go out, it also yeah. helps. Yeah. And there's a lot that sits in behind that. It's about your regularity and, um, you know, how often, you know, how, did they open a second email within the 30, first 30 days? So there is lots of stuff that sits in behind a really good setup. Yeah. And it will then go on to, um, and that's why segmenting though is so important. So mm -hmm. incredible. if you've got a skincare business, for example, let's use that, and someone buys moisturiser and then someone else buys, you know, moisturiser for aged skin, say, and someone else buys cleanse or an exfoliant for teenage skin. Different Those market. Completely different market. Yes, it's all your product and it's all your brand, but they are going to want to hear a completely different message. So if you send that exfoliating for teenage skin email to the lady who bought the moisturizer she's not going to open it and yeah, then because they are so different and that's why that segmentation is so important absolutely it's lazy oh. otherwise like i think yeah. like you know we both know that up to 30 percent of your your turnover can come from email and there's mm. this, like we're looking after it but people make email this kind of thing that they kind of slap on at the end yeah when, and, and also you know and we're not talking about this today but that emails can help your organic marketing on social media improve improve engagement and help paid advertising as well so it is yep. such an important part okay so um so ask how often what what are some other emails that are good to be automated so we've talked about welcome sequences we've talked about um getting those lead generation ones we've talked about asking for reviews what others and and also reminders product reminders mm -hmm. um so that would be like getting to buy again um mm -hmm. what else would you use them for um, I actually use them for even updates on, um, say, delayed orders. So I have, I've created a few little custom fields. And if a uh, order, for example, I know is going to be delayed, then we have a little automation that can separate that out. And after, uh, yeah, so we've got one that sits at two weeks. And at two weeks, anyone who we can see through my active campaign platform hasn't been shipped then I have an automation that um, sends a notification through to me or, or one of the girls on my team to say, can you please check on this customer's order? So yes, they then go in and manually check on it, but that notification came to me through, through my marketing platform based on everything else they're doing in there. I love and it that. means then customer service. They get a personalized email saying, hey, um, this is why your order hasn't come out yet, or maybe in some cases it may have, and it just hasn't, something hasn't connected or, you know. That's awesome. So that's the customer service and kind of operating on that. What other things would you automate? Uh, I automate taking them off my list, which is just as oh, important. Tell me about that because we talk about that a lot, but I think people are often surprised about this. So 
basically if you're sending emails to people who are not active or on your website or you know so we use site tracking to tell if they've been on the website recently oh, we've got an automation just what site tracking tell me what that is it's a little bit of code that sits on your website. So if they have signed up to your email marketing platform, then when they go on your website, those your email marketing platform and your website will talk to each other. And if they've, say, been on a particular page five times, that can trigger a new automation. So if they've been on a page about your teenage um, skin concerns five times, then you, that could trigger an automation and they're in your list. Of sending out an email saying, hey, have you seen our latest tips on looking after teenage skin? So so that could be like a value add, right? Like, so that's yeah. not even like, so it's just like a little thing of like, not even just like buy my stuff. No. It's a value add. Yeah. Yeah. So what happens though, is that if they're not opening your emails and they're not visiting your website, we actually have an automation in there that tags them based on their behavior. So are they, you know, highly engaged? So that might be the last seven, 14 days they've been active. Um, are they, you know, just, just active? That might be the last 21 days. Are they inactive, which means that they haven't done anything maybe in the last um, two or three months? Mm. Or are they completely disengaged? Um, and so if they are completely disengaged, that's hurting your deliverability for all the people who do want to hear yeah, from you. Yeah, definitely. You're sending emails. So sometimes you can even create... When we go back to talking about um, campaigns that are one-off, you can then exclude anybody that has a tag disengaged to make sure that your open rates are higher or you can then unsubscribe them, which means they stay in there but um, they're not getting those emails because they obviously don't want to, to, to hear from you. I really like that because I am um, I'm like with identify we have automations but I also do send out a weekly email and I'm going to tell you something about that that I discovered I actually did something I followed our own advice that I haven't done all along and it made a dramatic <laughs> impact um but I even though I'm sending out an email that's quite similar to everybody on the list I still segment it which is a pain in the butt you know I segment it to our clients our Facebook group and then I have a thing called general population Rod always thinks it's like the jail he thinks it's hilarious <laughs> But I actually was thinking I could do that with that. I could actually create one that's an engaged list of those and then a disengaged mm. one and kind of give those ones and just watch that one and see if I can reduce it down. Um, but I'll tell you what I did. So I, I always have written my email on a Friday, which is a bad day to write emails, but the podcast comes out on a Friday. So I'm like, it makes sense. I ran out of puff last week and I was just like, look, I just can't do it. I'm just not going to do it. So I was like, I'll do it on Tuesday. Wow. That same email, so same list, same email all week i've had emma i've had sales appointments i've had inquiries i've had feedback i've had replies because friday's a bad day to send emails about yep. business but yes. do you think that i've been doing that no so now it's on a tuesday <laughs> so, and so here's that's a really interesting point too because like this is one thing I see so many times people say to us, and I think you would hear it all the time mm. too, is that um, I'm posting all the time and I'm sending emails and nothing's happening. And you know what, though? Are you posting about what they want to hear about at the time they want to hear about it? And are you sending the emails in the same way? So I know I get huge engagement on a Friday night on my Facebook post. Yes, you funny would. Memes. Yeah, yeah, funny yeah. memes. That's what they, they yeah. like them. They'll comment. I have really, really, really low sales. So I send out my more campaign style emails that might be telling them about all the new stock that I've just uploaded or something like that on a Sunday mm. at around about six o'clock. It's a perfect and time to do it. Sunday you're night. stuff for the week. Fair enough. It. Yep. You want your treats because you're like, I've just had the weekend. I've had a lovely weekend. Now I've got to go back to work or whatever. I need to get some stuff. Yeah. And yeah. It's, it's a difference between engagement and purchasing behaviour and you need yes. to know that difference with your customers and with your clients because they will engage with you at different times that they will purchase from you. Yeah, I think that's a really important one. I, I used to say that to someone asked me once, um, I think they were, a, oh, they were a clothing brand and they said, I don't understand it. Our engagement, we send out our emails at night and we get really high engagement of open rates and we have lots of add to carts on our website, but we don't get any sales until the next day. And I said, look, 
This is how women of young children work. <laughs> they sit down in front of the couch and they're pretending to interact with their children or their husband and they add stuff to cart. And then they realize that it'll be a bit different now because I've always got my cards and my phone. But, you know, they realize they don't have their card. To leave the couch, they're going to have to admit to their husband who they thought they were talking to <laughs> that they're not. So they keep it quiet. And then tomorrow they'll go and finish the order. That's it. But they'll probably only finish it if you remind them to finish it. Yeah, and it's that whole buyer behaviour, right? That's right. And um, and, and people have this idea that they're just going to send out one email and that's going to be enough, but it's not. No, no. And, you know, that's why we call them, you know, a marketing campaign because it's not one little piece of it that you send an email and you'll get a, get a sale or you run a Facebook ad and you're going to get a sale. No, it's got to be, and I say this to my clients as well, is, Marketing is like um, snowflakes, you know, they're each type of, you know, Facebook is one snowflake and email marketing is another one. And all these amazing snowflakes, when they all come down, when they settle on the ground individually, they all are just going to melt away. Yeah. If you pull them all together into like a snowball and then you threw it at someone, that's, that's going to make, that's going to have an effect. So you yeah. want all this marketing to come together with one single outcome rather than I did a post about um, sun, you know, skin in the sun. And then I did another post about skin in winter within two days of each other. And why aren't they working? Cause I'm trying to sell a product for autumn, yeah. you know? Yeah. Yeah. Cause you do have to be tight and you have to say things a lot more than you think you do over again yeah. on the same topic <laughs> over and over again. Yeah. Um, and so often you don't need as much content as you think you just have to find different ways to say it yeah um so one of the things i was going to ask you with this like in terms of like um emails like we we have a client most loved client whose emails are like 12 pages long if you print them out how long should an email be i actually think it depends on exactly what you're selling so we've got a um a food client that i worked on their active campaign and it is highly graphic their their emails their um target market you know they love clicking on pictures and they didn't even really need obvious call to action buttons they just they would click on the picture and off they go and make a purchase that's all they needed was lo lots of visuals um my particular market if i sent out an email like that i would get nothing out of yeah. it like nothing yeah. my market like to have a letter style but it shouldn't be too long. It shouldn't no. take more than maybe two or three minutes to read because I'll tell you what the whole idea of your marketing is to get them to take action. They can't take action in an email. If you're e-commerce, for example, they need to go to your website to take action, to look at the product, to make a purchase. That email's job is to get them to your website, not to have them involved in some massive big story what you should not pen pals no no <laughs> so what you want to do is you want to have all that amazing stuff you want to say in a blog on your website so it helps your seo in your email you might just include the first paragraph and then a obvious call to action see the rest of the blog here and mm -hmm. they click on it they're over on your website and that goes for okay. service and e-commerce yep i really like that um, actually, I'm just making a little note for myself about something I'm going to do for my next one. Watch out, people, on Tuesday, because you'll be getting something <laughs> new. I had it not that, but it made me think of something. Okay, so let's just talk a little bit about, so you've got, if we talk about, like, your emails around that, what is what would you consider, for, generally, I know this is hard, but campaigns versus automations, I think we said before they have a higher open rate. What are some good open rates that we should be looking at for those two types of, of emails? And I know it's hard because it depends on a whole lot yeah. of stuff. It depends on a lot of stuff and it depends on industries even and all of that. But the general industry, like the general email standard is um, 17 to 23% open rate is average and 2 to 3% click-through rate is average. I will be honest, if I got rates that low, I think I would probably cry. How would um, I? Yeah. I... <sighs> And again, it goes to also how many people, because obviously these are percentages, how many people you've sent to. Yes. So depending on the email, you know, I if I'm getting a campaign, I like to see at least 15% click through. Um, it's quite high, I think. That's good. Yeah. I mean, I've had some that sit down around 8%, but um, and, and still got really, really good sales. 
which was quite surprising to me. But I like to try and aim for like 15%. I like to see my average open rate. So my platform gives it to you on your dashboard, your average open rate for everything going on on their platform around um, at least the 50% mark. Um, it will, but you know what else, what changes it? is if I've had a massive Facebook campaign and I've got heaps of people signed up within three or four days, that open rate will drop because it takes them a little, it takes them a couple of days to open your emails. Yeah. But if you're that, that open, I'm oh, sorry, the sign up rate is sit, sitting pretty steady. You don't really want it below 50%. Um, just because then you're not segmenting enough, it's telling you. Yeah, and probably also you've probably got a bunch of disengaged people on there that yep. have just signed up and you haven't. Because you, what we're seeing from you doing that is that you've got a very clean list. And open yeah. rates are good because open rates help, to look like we're getting technical, but open rates tell the email provider, the people that you're sending it to, that your emails are good to be used. So it's telling them, the, it's a personality contest, essentially. You're saying that I have the best personality out of all the emails, so mm -hmm. I should come and be in the inbox of the person that I've sent it to. Yeah, yep. And <laughs> everyone knows using email how good that those algorithms they use are because don't you sit there sometimes and go, how on earth did you know I wanted that email in my inbox? Yeah, like, it's kind of crazy how, like that. How did Outlook know that? <laughs> one of the things that people really worry about with automated emails is they worry that they're not going to be personalized or they're just going to feel like a robotic thing. Do you want to just answer to that, like why it's not like that? Well, it's not like that already because you're you're segmenting who you're sending it to. Yeah. So, you know, if they are a brand new purchaser, you're not going to be sending them a thank you for being such a VIP customer. Mm -hmm. um, so you've already broken that down. A good platform will let you personalize it and with a lot of options. So I always start an email with their first name. Um, the only time that trips me up is if they've given me some, I did notice on mine the other day, someone put their first name as who cares. <laughs> so they're going to get an email that says, um, to who cares? <laughs> who cares? It's quite, well, it's their fault, isn't it? Right. But in all honesty, that's pretty rare that they do that. Yeah. Um, but, you know, you can even you know, personalise it by including, you know, the last purchase, that, you know, the last product they purchased or um, the last date that they purchased, the last shipping date, you know, last time that they you shipped an order to them. Mm. There's so many ways to purchase it, uh, to segment it and personalise it that you should be use, using them as much as you can without it seeming a little bit um, gimmicky. So I've seen people add a personalization section in there and then make it in bold, which then it makes it look like it's just like yeah, a mailbox. Kind of weird, right? Yeah, yeah. You want it to make look like normal conversation. Now I know um, we use Active Campaign, um, and you have WooCommerce site, and it has been clunky. Although it looks like it's been fixed, the um, content block automation um, mm. for WooCommerce, and we found that it's working really well now, which is great. And it is also for Shopify. And we haven't mentioned Clavio, but Clavio is also another one that allows mm -hmm. you to have that content block. Um, yep. and, and what that means um, for those who are not listening means it's dynamic. So whatever they've looked at on the website comes through, and that's what they see on their um, email. Do you use that? Yeah, and I use it a little bit different to that. So I will um, base it on a tag. So if I know that they love product A, yes. I will have the content block only fill up with products from category A. Oh, I like category that. Category A is part of. And then I can, but what I can do also is I can have one single email and then have those conditional. So that product block only shows if this customer has a tag of product A, it'll show all of that. So I can add like five different product blo blocks, make them all conditional. So I'm not having to do five different emails. Oh my gosh, I love it. And so it's only telling the, the customer what they want to hear about. So I absolutely love that because that fits in, like imagine how much time that makes, like you go new new arrivals, like for a clothing designer, and you might have someone who loves this brand or someone who loves this brand or this brand, and you can segment them off, and that's the only ones that they happen to see, but the content itself is the same. Yeah, yeah, that's it. I really like that, and that works on WooCommerce and Shopify with Active mm -hmm. Campaign. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so that's a really cool way to automate in a way that's really personalised. Yeah, absolutely. And it just keeps that message nice and clean for that for the right message for the right customer at the right time. 
So we talked at the beginning about how you spent that first six months really looking through and setting things up correctly. Now, I'm, a, I'm 100% a believer of that. And mm-hmm. I think that's great. For those people that are not in a position to do that, and uh, at the moment still trying to build things up and they haven't done that, when do you think is a good time to start adding that marketing automation and using a platform like Active Campaign? Because we have clients, you know, when we always say, like, if you've got over sort of 1,500 people on your list, Active Campaign is a great one to jump mm-hmm. on. You'll see some great gains. And some clients will use it when they've got smaller lists as well. We, we often also use Matter Light for tiny lists if they're not going to grow. But what would you say to people who are, who are in those small spaces? Um, is there stuff they should do before they do the, the email marketing or do you think that that should be a priority to them? You have a bit of a bias, but, you know. Yeah, I do have a bias. But I set mine up from day one. Yeah. And, and you know, I hear people say to me, um, oh, I hate pop-ups on, my, on websites and I'm not going to put yeah. one online. Well, I will tell you that at least 60% of my signups have come from that pop-up. But what I've also done is put a sign up in the footer. Mm-hmm. So that goes up, that shows on every page because it's the same footer on every page. And the other 40% of sign ups come from there. Um, so I my thing is it's never too early to start, but don't expect to get massive results. Yeah. You know, don't think you're going to send out an email and get $4,000 worth of sales when you've only got a list of 500 people. You might, yeah. but if you've got, or maybe if you're selling $2,000 items, <laughs> but um, in all honesty, that's not going to be realistic. But if you start getting a list around 2,000 people, then maybe that could be realistic. That could be very, you know, I've, I've seen that happen often, often. But it's an engaged list if you've built yes. it over that time. And, and I think that's one of the things that I feel is really important is that I think a lot of people when they start an e-commerce business don't actually realize it's not a matter of just chucking up a website. You know, no. you spend hours working on your SEO on your website, your organic social media your email marketing and that's how you've seen that growth and a lot of it you have done yourself and besides paying for active campaign and a few other things um and shop of also woocommerce and and that sort of thing besides paying for those things a lot of it's been free yeah but time it's time yeah and I could go and pay other people or pay for more expensive platforms that you know I don't have to spend the time on but um for me I was lucky we were in the middle of COVID so I had some time we weren't allowed to go out anywhere (laughs) but I know it's not realistic for for everybody but then I also see people say oh I could never give the give the time but I also don't want to spend the money. And the frustration for me there as a strategist and an email marketing um, specialist is, well, then you're not going to get anything. If yeah. you can't you give it time, time, you're not going to get anything back. Yeah. And I think that's super, super awesome. Um, okay. So I um, I would like, so what would you say to people who are thinking about, if they're listening, they go, I need email marketing. Um, what what would you say would be their next steps if they were, so if they want to work with us? Because I'm going to ask you if you weren't working with us. So what would you say would be the next steps to take? I think that to do an effective email marketing, you need to have a strategy first because you need to understand where it's going to sit in as part of your strategy. Is it the primary way you're going to try and get sales? Is it Um, where does it sit in with a Facebook funnel or something else? You need to really have a clear idea of that. Um, Maybe you're running radio ads. So how are you going, where is it going to sit in with something like that? Once you know where email marketing is going to sit for you, then you, you kind of get all of those things in place and then you jump in and make sure that you get that set up. My suggestion is to get someone, you know, obviously us first and foremost, but if it's not us, someone else who understands it really, really well to set it up for you if you don't. Because there are lots of tech sides of things, you know, um, something we see a lot, people who come to us is, and from other platforms especially, is they have lots of different lists and that is a nightmare they don't even know what to do with. Whereas we always say you have one list and you segment them out by having different tags. Um, but if you don't understand that and don't understand how that works, then you should be getting someone to do it for you because, again, why waste money when you could be having an effective, you know, email marketing platform working for you? 
Yeah, I think that's very good advice. Um, Tracy, thank you so much for today. Um, I love your passion about email marketing. It always <laughs> shines through. Um, and yeah, thank you. I'm going to put some, I'm going to put a link to Servicate and to Active Campaign, and obviously to talk to us as well in the show notes. Um, and I'm going to make sure we get you back on here a little bit earlier than like eight months because that would be yeah, okay. <laughs> thank you so much. <laughs> See ya. Well, Tracy had so much knowledge that she shared with us today. It was so great to sit and chat to her. Because we live in different countries, I really enjoy having these opportunities. So thank you for those of you that listen today, indulging me as well, enjoying hanging out with one of my favorite people. Now, a couple of things that I want to raise from this. First of all, thank you so much for listening to this episode. If you enjoyed it and it's your first time here, please do remember to use the subscribe button. And if you've loved this for a while and been listening for a while, please give me a review. I would love it. It helps other people trust the podcast. And remember, at all times, any of you can come along to our Map It Marketing group on Facebook to ask questions out of this podcast. Now, here's a few things I'd like you to think about. We talked about Active Campaign in this podcast. We are Active Campaign Consultants, so we've put a link in the show notes. But you can apply everything in this plan, in this podcast, to your own business. Go through and work out what you need. And I suggest planning out on paper what journey you want to take your customers on before you go jumping in. Have a think and start with the welcome emails because that's a good big hit for you. And then look at things like empty cart and other things that are the easy setups and then start building out a way to help people relate to you, build a relationship with you using email. But please move away from the old monthly, just sending out a mass email thing and you will see great results for your marketing. I'm looking forward to hearing your results. Next week, it's me, and I'm going to be sharing with you some information around what I've been learning on TikTok and how I'm using a content plan on there to help create content across a range of different areas. It will fit any type of business, and I'm looking forward to working with you and talking you through it. If you love what you heard today, be sure to hit subscribe. And if you love this episode in particular, I'd love it if you shared it on social media. Remember to tag me in so I can say thank you. Have a great week and we'll talk soon.